What's going on guys? And in this video, I have got a 2021 Jeep Compass Latitude. Let's go over it. Now, as you guys can see, the Compass is a small to mid-size SUV. I like to call it a small SUV. We've got larger SUVs like the Grand Cherokee, which is quite a bit bigger than this one. Then we have really big ones like the Durango. So I consider this a small SUV. Now for the size of it, I'm six foot tall standing next to it. So you can easily reach the rooftop if you're about my height, if you end up putting you know, something on the top up here, if you're gonna go for uh, one of the roof racks or bike racks or anything that you put up here, it's really easy because it's not a super giant vehicle. So let's go around and see what it looks like. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, uh... Doodly do 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 do. So we've got plenty of room. Again, I am six foot tall and I've already got the seat adjusted. I've got more than enough room. And the great thing about these is you can adjust these in basically any way, telescoping steering wheel. So if you're a shorter person, you can push that forward or more towards you. You've got your seat adjustments, which are pretty much normal, what everyone thinks of for seat adjustment, up, down, forward, back, lumbar support, etc. These have manual seats, so you can adjust this any way you want for your driving position as far back as you want. And that's, I mean, that's a little bit too much for me, but if you're tall, you'll fit into it, and if you're short, you'll fit into it. And I've got way more than enough headroom up here. I've probably got about another six inches before my head hits the top. And I can keep going down. You can be very tall and still be in here. Now I feel tiny. I don't like feeling tiny. I need to go back up. So, of course, we looked at the front seat. Now we got to look at the back seat. Because this is an SUV, we actually have enough room in the back seat and it's not cramped. So full grown adult, I've got six feet of me sitting in the front here and six feet of me, so adult, adult, sitting in the back. I've got more than enough knee room. I've got a little pocket to put garbage into most likely because uh, your passengers are douchebags and they're going to put garbage back here. But I've got more than enough room back here. I've got headroom to spare even if I stand straight up my my hair is just touching the top but no one sits like that because it's creepy so you're gonna sit gonna be relaxed I've got probably about two inches two and a half inches above my head there's more than enough room back here so if you're hauling adult people in the back you're gonna have the room and of course we have got to talk about the trunk space or the hatch space whatever you would like to call it for something this size is actually a decent amount of room back here. And even if you don't think it's enough room, just like pretty much every vehicle nowadays, you can put the rear seat down and give yourself some more room. This back panel can actually be adjusted if you wanna put it higher like that to make it more of a flat surface. If you just want more depth, you can pick this up and you can put it almost all the way down to the floor. And if you want to, you can take it completely out. You have room back here. Now this is a new thing. All these new vehicles are coming with repair kits or pumps in the back. They don't come with full size spares or donuts anymore. However, there is room, as you can see, there's a, there's a little divot down here. You can still put donuts back here and you've even got the little uh, screw that keeps those in place. So it is a possibility you can put those down there, but that's what they all come with nowadays. Well, I guess I started in my last video, so I might as well continue. I don't have boxes, because why would I have boxes? We're gonna, we're gonna do the human test because I always have a human with me. Again, I am a six foot tall human. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, I can fit back here. And I'm within the uh, closing limits of the trunk. So you can fit a human back here. I don't know why you're fitting humans in the back of your car. I'm more likely doing boxes, but I don't have boxes. This is a good representation of what I have. I'm useful. 
So for the 2021, there is basically nothing on the outside that is different from the previous years. They didn't do any um, body styling differences, facelifts. They didn't change taillights. They didn't change dimensions. It is all basically exactly the same. They didn't change anything, uh, at least on the outside. They haven't changed anything at all. So for the 2021 Jeep Compass Latitude, the standard features that comes in all of these vehicles is keyless entry, push button start, electric park brake, backup camera, fog lights, the Uconnect 4 system, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, dual zone air conditioning and climate control, manual seats, second row USB, auto headlights, and heated mirrors. The 2021 Jeep Compass comes with 180 horsepower and 175 foot-pounds of torque, coming from a 2.4 liter inline four engine paired with a six-speed automatic transmission. This no longer comes with a manual in any of the models. So you're looking at 22 city, 31 highway, and a combined of 25 MPG you can get up to 418 miles per tank on the 13.5 gallon tank. Now this is the exact same engine and transmission and MPG that comes in the previous 2020. So when it comes to the interior, I absolutely love what they did with it. The design, the stitching colors, the leather, all of this stuff is gorgeous. For something this price, this is one of my favorite interiors that they do. You can just see on here, they've got orange and white stitching. This is a leather trim, so it's not full leather. This right here, this is actually cloth. It's like a honeycomb cloth, and then leather trimmed on everything else. You can see it even here on the steering wheel. You've got the stitching that goes all throughout the steering wheel all around the outside it just makes the interior look so good even the back seat is the exact same way so here in the back seat you've of course got the cup holder you've got the armrests that are nice and leather and then along the back of the seats it's the same thing as the front you've got right where you sit it's going to be cloth and then above it is leather below it is leather it is really, really nice, and they're actually really comfortable seats too. And that's saying something for a new car, because usually they're pretty darn stiff. So here we are chilling on the inside of the car, and like I've shown you already, this interior is just wonderful. Everything that you look at around here feels and looks premium for a car that doesn't have a really premium price, honestly. It's, it's really the best out of all the vehicles when it when it comes to value for what you're getting. So there's nothing special up top here. We've just got the two dome lights that you can press and get that. Other than that, there's nothing else up there. No sunglass holder or anything. We also don't have anything up here besides some speakers. These new cars have a ton of speakers. They're everywhere. You've got three just up on the dash. Of course, you've got them down here on each of the door panels, but the sound system in these are just ridiculous. Not even the premium ones, but just the regular ones have gotten so much better. Down here, you've got your auto off. You can turn that off. I know a lot of people don't like this. Electronic parking brake, you can flip that on and off from down here. And traction control, which is a really nice feature to have if you do want to take that off. You've also got USB and auxiliary. I'm glad that they're, they've been keeping auxiliary because... I know a lot of people don't have a Bluetooth and stuff set up, but that is something that you can set up on these is Bluetooth, everything from your phone or whatever you have. It's really easy. Steering wheel controls, your standard stuff. You've got the cruise control and then you've got the menu buttons here and you've also have the Bluetooth and push to talk. You can set radio stations. In my opinion, it's kind of a gimmicky thing, but some people use it, it's pretty cool. You've got automatic headlights, which come standard. I always keep them on automatic so I don't ever have to deal with it. Other than that, it's a pretty basic car. Very nice, but very basic. All right, guys, so we're finally on the inside of the Compass. 
which is where most of you will be spending your time. First things first, the key fob. This is one of the newer key fobs. Um, a lot of vehicles are coming with this one, and this is something you just basically never have to touch. So you have this in your pocket, your purse, whatever. You just touch the door handle, and it unlocks the car for you. And same thing. I don't even need to touch them. I'm going to put them right down here. And uh, you just put your foot on the brake, hit the start button, and as long as the keys are inside the vehicle, it starts right up. You never have to touch the lock or unlock on the key fob. But uh, other than that, like I said before, I've got more than enough headroom in here to where I have it set. The seats are manual, which is, eh, for as much as this car is, about $23,000. It's, I would like to see it, but then again, it's not a super expensive vehicle. So I, I really, like I said before, I really love the interior in here. It is really wonderful. You can actually adjust the armrest forward and back. You've got a decent amount of space in there, nothing special. This is uh, on the cheaper end of vehicles for at least this trim, but everything in here looks good. It feels good. The steering wheel, leather wrapped, like everything on here feels good. Soft touch everything. It's just a very nice vehicle to be in for the price. Like value wise, this thing is amazing. So I don't think there's really anything else to go over. So let's do a drive. And of course, the first part of the drive is always going through this extremely bumpy parking lot, which people are walking out in front of me, so I have to go extra slow. I would say the suspension on this is fairly decent. It's not terribly stiff like um, the scat pack that I did, but it's also not super soft where you can't feel anything, but it is very good. You can still feel a little bit as you're driving through here, going through the bumps. But for a small SUV, I do like it. Let's get a little bit of a pickup getting out here on the road. Push itself through. All of my mirrors are off. I should have adjusted this beforehand. It's a safety thing that I don't do. Power mirrors, both sides, power locks. Strangely enough, you gotta say power doors and power locks because nowadays some cars still come with manual windows that you gotta crank up, manual locks. And by that, I mean the base Wrangler is still the only vehicle on our lot that comes with that at the very, very lowest trim. Still comes with manual everything and no AC. Surprisingly, no AC. And so far, the ride on here, it's not the quietest ride, but it's quiet enough. I don't have the the fan on, I don't have the radio on, it's just me, myself, and I sitting here in the car. And you hear just a tiny, tiny bit of wind noise, but it is actually really windy outside today. So wind noise is basically nothing. Road noise, you do have a bit of road noise, so it's not perfect there. It's about, it, it, it's so-so. I mean, compared to something that's $10,000 more, like the Charger that I drove in in my last review videos, um, that one is just unbelievable for what it is. But that's a, that's more of a $30,000 car. So almost every car that I've been in, on the new ones, on the selector switch down here for automatic transmissions, they have the ability to do manual shifting. You just pop it, when you're in drive, you just pop it over to the left, you go up for a downshift, and you press down for an upshift. I don't really ne necessarily like to do that. I could see using that when it's snowy or it's low on traction where I can kind of gear it myself, you know, start off in second gear, you can do that down here. But 
it's it's always something fun to do, especially if you're more of a sporty driver and you want to go through it yourself without actually having a manual transmission. That's a really cool thing to have. So this car is quite peppy. It's got a decent sized engine and horsepower compared to the size of the vehicle. So it's not slow by any means. And I'm going about 40 miles an hour right now. I'm gonna go ahead and step on it to see what this thing can do. Whoop. 60, it's not bad. I was, I was not, uh, I was not expecting that. That's why it kind of threw me back in my seat a little bit. It took a second to kick in, but once it did kick in, you can, you can definitely get the power down in one of these if you're passing vehicles. It's nothing crazy like a charger, but surprisingly enough, it does have the power. Steering, let's do the steering. It's always a fun thing that makes people think that I'm a drunk driver, but we'll do a little bit. It's very soft, lots of body roll. And if we do something more aggressive, again, lots of body roll. I feel like it kind of catches at the end of the turn like it's soft, but then it stiffens up at each of the corners. So I would really like to see this around uh, something more than a straight road, me going back and forth. Cause it feels like once you pull it into a corner, it kind of grips up more. But that first little bit, just, just small turns, lots of body roll, very soft. But once you kind of cut it a little bit more, you can, you can feel how much tighter it is. And because Jeep and Chrysler in general shares a lot of the same parts, sun visors popping it out of the way, it does have those. So after going around that corner, it's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it'd be a, a lot tighter of a turn just based on going back and forth. It kind of feels like it grips more at the end. Going around that, that hard 90 degree, not as much as I thought it was. But then again, it's a small SUV. You're not meant to be throwing it around the track or anything like that crazy stuff. So, oh God, there's a box in the road. Oh God. Okay, we're good. I slowly went around it. I mean, there's not really much to say. It has the same engine transmission as a lot of the vehicles that I drive every day on the lot. And it's very comfortable. It's quiet, not luxury quiet, but it is quiet. And this would be a high contender if I was ever to replace my small SUV, my Forester, in terms of comfort and price value, the, this is where I would be at. There's one other vehicle that's another small SUV and that's the, uh, that's the Cherokee. And it's basically the same size, but we don't have a 2021 yet. And I really like this one. Just, I think the interior and the comfort, the feel of this vehicle is, it, it just wins you over. If you ever have a chance to drive one of these or at least be in one of these, do it. Because it's going to win you over as soon as you get in here and drive it. It's very comfortable. Got to park the compass next to the other compasses. Com compasses? Compi? Com 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 compasses? I don't know how to say that. Back up camera because I'm too lazy to look behind me. Well, there you go, guys. That is my little review of the 2021 Compass. And honestly, I, I'm actually blown away by how much I liked it compared to what I thought it was. Because I've driven a lot of cars here on the lot. And like I said before, the, if I was going to trade in for another small SUV, Something's got the room if I want to put the rear seats down and do something, you know, haul things. Uh, this is actually a very comfortable, very nice interior ride. Something I would enjoy driving on a daily basis. 
So I did not expect that going into this. And again, I like leather trim. I don't like full leather because eh, it cracks over time, but because this one's got the leather trim, so it's got cloth on the inside, I like that more. So that's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think if you have driven one already. Let me know what you thought about it. Put it down below so I can read it because I do actually read my comments. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, of course, come on down, come see me or not. If you don't like me, then be that way. But anyway, come on down if you want to, talk to me, email me, what have you, and uh, I'll answer any questions you have about this. If, if you have any questions, maybe you just wanna to talk to me because I'm special. Special in the head, just a little bit. I should probably stop talking.